okay, now that you've completed your monster, we're going to go in and create the shadow for the monster. This is a requirement of the project because we're creating a, a new space, a new character in a new space. So I've got, um, I'm going to turn off the layers that are parts of the body here, and I'm going to go see, because I want to show you the background. I created this background from two separate pieces that I found, royalty-free photos that I found online, and I montaged them together here. You can use a single background, but we talked in class about how the figure would relate to that background. So the figure needs to be standing somewhere, because we're going to be adding a shadow. Now I'm going to turn off the eyeballs. I'm going to turn off the visibility for every layer that is not a part of the body. So now I've got all my body parts are, are visible and I'm going to go, there's two places I can go. I can go into my layer panel. Um, this little icon right here is my layer menu. If I go down, I can um, merge the visible layers. That's an option there, right? Command Z, I'm going to go back to unmerge them because I can also go to the layer menu at the top layer and then I could go down to merge visible. And so now the body is one piece. Let me turn my background back on because next we're going to work on the shadow. To create the shadow, we're going to start by putting a drop shadow on this layer here. So I'm, I have this layer selected. Let me let me slide this up so it's not taking up so much space. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click on FX, right? And I'm going to choose the drop shadow, but really I could just choose the top one because it's going to bring up the same dialog box. So here's my shadow. So a drop shadow, what a drop shadow is. Now, if you, if you opened up the box, let me cancel this and go back out. If you opened up the box and you just chose the first one here like this, then it's on the first option, which is blending options. And that's blending options for the layers. But if I go down to, and I click on the word drop shadow, then it changes my options. I can add a bunch of layer styles here. Oh, those are very cool. But if I don't click on the icon here, then it doesn't change my options in the center of the layer style panel. That actually looks pretty cool, that, that outer glow, but we're working with a drop shadow. Okay, so I've got my drop shadow. I'm going to turn my opacity up, but I kind of want to, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit so I can see through it. There's another way, another area that I can do this, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. I'm um, another place where you can turn the opacity down. So I'm going to make mine a little bit darker, and then I'll make it lighter in a minute. Um, the distance is how far away it is from my body. I want it slightly off to the side. It Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, because I'm going to do something with the shadow here in a moment. The spread is how much it's spreading from its original shape. I would keep that down and keep that pretty accurate to your body. And then the size is going to kind of blur out the edges. So I kind of want to blur it out just a little bit. This depends on like how sharp your lighting is in the space, right? Like, is it a, is it a very sharp shadow? Then maybe it's, it's a tight shadow, right? That's, that's awfully tight. There's also another area that I can increase the blur and I'll show you that as well, but I would mess with this a little bit and kind of move it up forward. All right. When you're happy with that shadow, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now the drop shadow is attached to the layer, right? So it's attached to the layer of this figure. So I need to detach it. I'm going to go to the layer menu again up at the top. Now this is one that I, you know, this one is not in this area here. I don't, I, maybe I haven't seen it. Maybe it isn't there, but I'm going to go to the layer menu up at the top. I'm going to go to layer style and I'm going to go all the way down because I already have a drop shadow on it. I'm going to go down to create layer. And um, you probably, you might get, I don't, I don't have the dialog box that pops up and it asks me if I want to do that. If it does do that, you can go ahead and hit okay. I've disabled that box because I, I just wanted to, to separate the shadow. So if you can see what, what have happened now is I have the body is separate from the shadow. Right? It's like Peter Pan, right? The body separates from the shadow. So now I can take that shadow and I can squash it onto the ground. I can push it off to the side. So that's what I'm going to do next here. If I go to the top, now in Photoshop, um, if you're using the, the newest version of Photoshop, the, the CC, the cloud here, the creative cloud, um, when you change the size of the shape with the transformation controls, it changes proportionally automatically. So I don't want to make it proportional. I want to, I want to kind of squash this and put it on the ground. So I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm going to take this shadow and I'm going to squash it onto the ground behind the character there. Okay. So, I mean, at its, it's a basic form. That's where our shadow is right now. Now, the shadow needs to line up with the feet, right? And the, the reason why I want, we want to separate the shadow is because now it's fully editable. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in just a minute. But the, at the very least, the feet have to line up. If the feet don't line up, then you give the illusion that this character is floating above the ground, right? And that's not what we want. We want I mean, maybe that is what you want. But for our purposes here, we want them to be on top of the ground there. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to skew the shadow. Let me make sure I'm on my shadow layer. I want to skew it off to the side. So um, I notice that this part of my image is a little bit lighter. I am in space, I guess, so it's not that much lighter. I'm going to darken the whole image here in a moment, but there's definitely a lighter part here. You could argue, I could go in and I could, um, well, I guess before I flattened it, I could have made this arm a little bit darker and pushed the value there. This is not consistent, but I'm going to use the light from this 
area of shooting this way. So let me go to my shadow. I'm going to go to the edit menu. I'm going to go down to transform and I'm going to choose skew. So with the skew, I can take this shadow and kind of push it off to the side. You have to take the corners. I'm taking the corner and you want to get like, I would say a parallelogram, right? You want these two sides to be parallel with these two sides. And that really gives the illusion that I'm standing there, the light is hitting and it's creating the shadow. I double click to apply the transformation. Now, if I wanted it to be less opaque, right? Now notice here, fill, right? That happened in the layer style. So I can go over here and I could go ahead and turn it on black if I wanted to, or I could take it down a little bit. I do want to be able to see through it. So I could turn down the fill or I can go in and play with the opacity too. Either of those would work. If I wanted to blur the edges more, I could go to the filter menu. I could go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. And that one will kind of blur the edges a little bit more depending on how sharp I wanted my shadow to be. Okay. So final steps here is I might want to adjust the brightness and contrast. I'm going to go to the figure image adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm going to take that brightness down just a touch. It's a little intense, right? It's a little intense. So I'm going to take it down a little bit. Um, and I want to do the same thing. I'm, I'm in space. So I need the, the intensity of the background to be come down just a little bit too. So I can go into here and, and I'm kind of making a few little adjustments. I really want my character, my figure to stand out from that background, right? Why did I just do this whole piece if I wasn't going to make him stand out and be bold on that background? So let me darken that a little bit too. And I think we're good to go. If there was a part of this shadow that did not make sense, let's say, um, let's say, let me hold shift and we make the shadow a little bit bigger. Let's say the shadow was a long shadow, right? Um, the shadow would be on the ground. It would not be on the sky. And so the reason, one of the other reasons why you put it in its own layers, because now it can erase from a part of the layer. So if I need to erase from a part of the layer to make it make sense, I have that ability when it's separate. If it's, if it was contained, I could not do that. All right. Whenever you do a montage, the very last thing you should consider at the very end is whether or not you would put a filter on this. So if I'm done, I'm going to go layer. I'm going to choose flatten image. Okay. And then I'm going to put a filter on it. So I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to choose filter gallery. Um, you just did a lot of work to this character. We worked on this for a while. So a cutout filter, that's, that one's not going to work. I'm zooming out here so I can see my whole picture. That one's not going to work. Ones that I love, um, the film grain is a great filter. It really kind of pulls the piece together. Poster edges is a great filter. It kind of gives it that cartoony effect. And when you choose them, you have options on the side here so you can, in, you know, improve upon or extend upon any intensity or thickness or posterization or any, you know, they all have different options in here that you can play around with. Okay, so here we have our Frankenstein's monster with our realistic shadow. Thanks for watching.